Hello, and welcome to Godly Play. My name is Gail Ayton, and I'm going to tell you a story about the crosses this morning. First of all, I have a few crosses that I collected from my home that I brought to show you. And I'll tell you a little bit about those, and then we'll go into the crosses for church. This cross is a cross that came from Africa, and a friend of mine brought that to me from her trip. She was a missionary there. And this is a cross that another friend brought me from Spain. And this cross actually came from Italy. I've had it since I was 16. My aunt and uncle brought it to me from, from Italy for my birthday. And this cross is a gift from my husband for my birthday one year. And this cross is a cross that I got on a trip when I went to Santa Fe. It was at a mission. And this cross, a lot of you will recognize, this is a Celtic cross from the church. And this cross is very small, but it's very important because in the center of this cross, if you have to shut one eye and look through the other, you can read the Lord's Prayer. It's hard to think that you can get the Lord's Prayer in that little part, but it's got a magnifying glass in it. And this is another cross, and this one hangs next to my bed, and so it's always real close to me, and I see it first thing in the morning, and it's from Santa Fe as well. Okay, and now I'm going to tell you about the crosses of the church. This cross is called the Latin cross, and this is the most common cross, and this is a cross just like the one that Christ died on. And what we remember about this cross is that Christ died to save our sins and that we have eternal life from that. So that's the first cross. And the second cross is called the Tau Cross. And it is a very old cross. And it, um, it has been in the church for a long time, or before the church even. And it is just a really pretty cross, very simple. And this cross is called St. Andrew's Cross. And St. Andrew's was very, or Andrew was very close to God. And so when Andrew died, he wanted to be crucified on a cross, unlike that of Jesus. So this was his cross. And it's also shaped like an X. And this is the anchor cross. This is my favorite cross. And it shows the anchor across that holds a boat in place for a ship or a boat, depending on what size it is. And it's also the sign that when we stray maybe from faith or whatever we stray from during our um, mission, this anchor will pull us back. That will always remind us to pull us back into the faith that we need to be in. And this cross is called the Egyptian or Coptic, Coptic cross. And it's also called the Ankh cross, which symbolized life. And this, a lot of you have seen this cross, it's the Celtic cross. And you'll see more of these when you're around an area where there's lots of Irish people. And this cross has a total circle. This part of it is a circle. 
and that signifies eternity. And this cross is called the budded cross. And you can see we're on each end, it looks like a little bud. And what that means is that it's the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Oh, not Ghost, Holy Spirit. And this cross is the last cross that we have, and it's called the Great Cross. And you can see that the arms of this cross are all equal size. And sometimes you'll see this cross with a circle around it, which also means it's a cross of eternity. And sometimes we can reach out to people from all different directions, and we can tell them about Jesus. Anyway, this is my story, and I have a couple of wondering questions. I wonder if you have a favorite cross out of any of these crosses. If you have a favorite, I know I said earlier, the anchor was my favorite. I just like the meaning of that cross, and I like the cross itself. And can you pick out any one of these crosses that you could take away and we'd still have the same story or the same meaning. And also, I think a nice thing for you to do this week between Palm Sunday and Easter would be to make your own cross at home. You could make it out of wood, or you could draw color across, or use colored paper. Put sparkles on a cross, you could do it. Make it your cross. And that would be a nice thing to do for the week between Palm Sunday and Easter. Thank you for joining me this morning. And have a happy Palm Sunday and a happy Easter.